Malaysia changed its government for the first time in 60 years from Barisan National to Pakatan Harapan. Subsequently, Malaysians started to coin the term New Malaysia to embrace their hopes for a better nation. Their hopes are reflected in Malaysia Consumer Sentiments Index. After the general election, Malaysia CSI surged to its all-time high at 132.9 points. It was the nation's highest CSI since the Asian financial crisis. From here, we can see that the consumer confidence has been boosted after Pakatan Harapan victory. However, the CSR plunged by 25.4 to 107.5 points on the third quarter of 2018. Technically, it wiped out the optimism formed right after the victory of Pakatan Harapan. At this moment, the people may have realized that they have been over-optimistic with the rhetoric of New Malaysia. Despite the euphoric moment of the GE14, people did not reverse their past pessimistic view towards the nation property market. According to the statistics from Bank Negara, the loan approved for residential and non-residential properties remained stagnant in 2018. Residential properties seen slight recovery from the bottom since 2016, but still did not outgrow its previous peak. For the non-residential property segment, the trend sidelined with no sign of recovery despite the tax holiday. But with the growing economy, there must be a segment that grows to offset the depressing residential and non-residential segments. The answer is the purchase of passengers' cars and personal loans. Referring to the statistics from Bank Negara, the loan used for passengers' cars leaped to historical high in June and July. This shows that Malaysians took the opportunity of the tax holiday to purchase passenger cars. Meanwhile, the amount of approved personal loan remains high after the general election. It reached its historical high since the founding of the nation. As shown statistically, Malaysians opt for consumption rather than investment for their capital. This lifestyle realized former Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Razak's dream of making Malaysia a consumption nation. But the real implication of such spending to economy is rather mixed. According to Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng, the nation's household debt to GDP as of September 2018 has reduced to 83.2%. This is a minor reduction compared to the 83.9% a year ago. Yet, it is also revealed that only 59.6% of Malaysia household debt is consists of mortgage. On the other hand, the non-property debt is at 40.4%, whereas the ideal ratio for household debt as a developed country is 74% for property debt and 26% for non-property debt. The high ratio of non-property household debt lowers the disposable income of the people and at the same time, it does not offer any return on their capital. Although the public leverage to spend on big ticket goods, the high consumer confidence does not translate to real economy growth. Despite the tax holiday from June to September, the GDP of the third quarter only grew by 4.4%. This is lower than the forecast GDP growth conducted by Reuters poll, which is expected to be at 4.6%. As a result, IMF lowered Malaysia economy growth forecast to 4.7%, compared to the 5.3% forecast made in March. As far as we can tell from the numbers, the low GDP growth shows that the optimism from the hope of new Malaysia did not contribute to the nation's economy.